get this kicked off. Thank you very much for joining. Um, my name is Sarah Susbury. I'm the Director of Student Assessment at the Virginia Department of Education. Uh, we're pleased to have you here tonight. Um, we are going to be talking about the new Virginia Alternate Assessment Program. So hopefully you see the slides um, and you're hearing my voice. Uh, you are muted, so you're good to go. Uh, we don't see you and we don't hear you. So uh, please feel comfortable in, in your location and we'll do the same from our location talking with you. Um, we are calling this an introductory teacher webinar. And really the purpose of tonight's session is to provide teachers and school staff. So those of you that actually are, are working with directly with students, um, and those students that have significant cognitive disabilities. That's the audience that we're trying to reach, the staff that, that works with um, that group of students. And we wanna give you a little bit of information. Um, we're calling it a general introduction into the new Virginia Alternate Assessment Program. Um, I know that you're familiar with the, the current VAP as we know it. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about that, but primarily we're gonna be talking about the new Virginia Alternate Assessment Program. Um, one of the main things we want to get across to you before we get started here is that this is very much a work in progress. So we have some, some basic information to share tonight, and I know that you're going to have a lot of questions. Um, we will certainly be accepting questions and monitoring those. You should have a Q&A uh, feature that you can enter your questions, um, and then we will have a, a question and answer period at the end of the webinar as well, where, we're, where we will address uh, those questions, those that we can. Um, so you can see that we've had one of these sessions already. Um, tonight is, of course, Monday the 3rd. I don't know how we got to the month of May, but we're here. And then we've got three others that are coming up. Um, if you have uh, colleagues that are interested in joining, the last Monday and the last Wednesday session are open and available. The 11th is full. Uh, we have 500 people registered for that. But so if you wanted to share information about this, the last two sessions are, are available. Okay, I wanted to take just a moment and find out who is with us here tonight on the phone. I'm going to launch a, a quick poll. It's got two questions. And I'd like you to take a look at, uh, you probably have to scroll to see the two questions. Um, but go ahead and respond to those on your screen and um, we'll get an idea of who is, who is with us this evening and, and how much you know about the new VAP. All right, votes are coming in. Thanks very much, everybody. I'll be quiet while you read that question and select your answers. Terrific, we've got over 300 people here and about 60, 70% of you have voted. So we're getting there. I'm gonna leave it just for another, another couple seconds. Thanks again for chiming in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, end the poll and share the results with you so that you can, you get an idea of um, just what we have for people on the phone here or on the, on the webinar. So you can see that the elementary school special education teachers um, have won out as far as the majority of people here, 24%. And then you can see we've got a split of other, of other folks as well across the, the spectrum of options. And then as far as the, the amount of knowledge about the new Virginia Alternate Assessment Program, I'm encouraged that um, some of you have heard about the changes uh, that were going to occur. Um, I'm actually really encouraged that some of you have details about this, about the program, so that's terrific. Um, we'll certainly get you some information tonight, and if you didn't know about any of this until you saw this email, don't worry. We're going to fill you in tonight. You're in the right place, so thank you very much. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and we'll get rolling. Okay, so some of the topics that we're going to be talking about tonight, or the four topics that we're going to be covering tonight, um, we have an overview of the VAP, so the old VAP or the current VAP as you're doing it right now, and then the new VAP. And then we're going to talk about Virginia Essentialized Standards of Learning, or we call those the VSOL. And you'll learn a little bit more about those um, as, we, as we get into that section of the presentation. And then test design, we're going to give you a basic overview of what this test is going to look like for the Virginia Alternate Assessment Program. 
Um, this new test will be introduced in the uh, in the 22-23 school year. So, um, I'm, and the frequently asked questions, uh, I'm sorry, the 21-22 school year, that's what I get into trouble with school years. 21-22 school year, so spring of 22, and then we'll address some frequently asked questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand this off before I get into any other trouble. Uh, I'm gonna hand it off to Sharon Seiler. Um, she's going to be talking about the new and the old VAP. Um, before we get there, the Q&A feature is available for you to submit those questions. Um, we will be addressing questions at the end of the presentation. So I would encourage you, um, I've kind of talked about what the four sections are, encourage you to hold on to your questions uh, because a number of them I hope will be answered throughout the presentation. Uh, and we will stay on the line afterwards to answer a number of them uh, at the end of the presentation. And then this webinar is being recorded. We're going to record all of the webinars and then we'll choose one of them to be posted on the Department of Education's website. So I, I know a few of you have asked about, uh, will the slides be available? And this information will come out once we have finished all of the presentations. So late May, early June timeframe is what we're looking for. So again, thank you for joining tonight. Um, as I said, I'm gonna hand this over to Sharon Seiler to take off with the first part of the, of the presentation. Thank you so much, Sarah, and good evening, everybody. I'd like to uh, join Sarah in welcoming everybody and uh, taking time out of your evening to, um, to join us. Um, the topic that I'm going to be presenting to you tonight, my hope is that it will provide you with um, um, context in terms of where the VAP started, where we currently are and how we're moving forward. And as a part of that journey, um, I'm hoping that the information that I'll um, share tonight will um, actually tell you why we are at the point that we are um, as we move into and develop a new Virginia alternate um, assessment program. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to start with the VAP uh, when it began almost 20 years a, a years ago. And I can say that it's, it's been a very interesting journey. So we're gonna go to the first slide um, in this particular section. Uh, those of you who uh, have been with the VAP uh, since it started, as we look back at the start of the program, which was in the 2000-2001 school year, you will recall that the VAP was a portfolio-based state assessment for students with significant cognitive impairments. Um, in those early years, um, the VAP was closely aligned to the student's IEP goals. And it focused on best practices, such as interaction with non-disabled peers and instruction in a variety of settings. Later, as we moved forward, um, USDOE shifted our focus from one on students' IEP goals to a very academic focus that was based on our general education content standards. And of course, for our state, uh, that meant that our VAP had to be based on the standards of learning. That were, that were reduced in depth, breadth, and, and complexity. So even though um, there were shifts uh, from IEP goal uh, focus to an academic focus, the, the design of the VAP stayed the same it remained a portfolio-based test. And so that's what our current VAP is. It's a, it's a portfolio-based um, um, assessment 
that evaluates academic standards from the standards of learning for students in grades three through eight in high school in the content areas of reading, writing, math, science, and history, social science. And those standards that the VAP is based on, yes, they have been reduced in, in complexity and depth. And you are familiar if you've done the VAP um, that those academic standards are referred to as the, as the aligned standards of learning or the ASOLs. However, this school year, 2021 is gonna be the last school year for the portfolio design of the, of the VAP. And it's also gonna be the last school year that we're going to use the ASOLs. Okay, next slide, Sarah. So why have we made this shift? On February 9th of 2019, um, USDOE notified Virginia and every so often state, um, state uh, assessment programs have to go through a process called peer review. And that's where the um, state um, assessment program is really looked at very, very, care very, very carefully. Well, <clears throat> whenever we went through that process, USDOE notified Virginia that the portfolio design of the VAP no longer met the requirements of the Every Student Succeeds Act, ESSA. And USDOE um, advised Virginia of three things. The first being that we had to redesign or replace our VAP. So we were gonna be, um, uh, had to move towards replacing our portfolio-based test. The second thing that US um, DOE uh, required of us is that we would provide them evidence that we had made that change by January 5 of this, of this year. Now, because of the pandemic, we were given an extension on providing them that evidence and they gave us an extension until January of 2022. But what they did not give us an extension on was the implementation date. So they are requiring that we implement our new VAP by the 21-22 school year, okay? So a lot of this has been very much USDOE um, focused. So in response to that um, um, letter in February of 2019, a number of things began to happen at the uh, Department of Ed. The first one being that we established um, a team of staff members from the Department of um, um, Assessment and the Department of Special Education. We also began to uh, seek out um, knowledge and guidance from a number of sources, starting with the National Center of Educational Outcomes, as well as USDOE. And we also, as part of the um, um, initial work of that team, we developed a work plan um, that would allow us to meet, um, to meet those goals, meet those um, deadlines that I shared on the previous slide. So in the winter and spring of last year, um, we started to look for um, a national assessment consortia or another state that could possibly partner with us. So we conferred with state assessment staff, state assessment directors, literally from across this country. And the partner that we chose 
was the behavioral research and teaching that's going to be referred to throughout this presentation as BRT. And BRT is located at the University of Oregon. So they are our partners as well as the Oregon Department of, Department of Education. So as we uh, continue to um, develop the VAP, you're going to likely meet staff members and see information from BRT. Uh, so um, as, as we started to look at what, what we wanted in our new VAP, what were the important um, um, things that we as a team at BDOE um, considered in terms of moving forward? Well, first of all, we wanted any new test to be able to really meet the needs of the students that the VAP is um, um, designed to serve including very low functioning students. We also knew that we would be going back to the peer review process. So we knew that, again, any new tests would need to meet the requirements of federal peer review. And we wanted to incorporate as many components of our current VAP as possible. Um, we also had to consider um, the standards of learning. So we knew that any new tests would have to uh, be based on linkages um, that uh, reflected SOL content. But because the SOLs change from time to time, the new VAP was also going to have to be nimble enough or uh, flexible enough to change as the standards of learning changed. Uh, what was also very important to us is that uh, we would uh, design and develop the new um, VAP so that there could be as many opportunities as possible for the, in, for the involvement of Virginia teachers. And then finally, um, we wanted the scores that were produced by the new VAP to match the current reporting timelines that we have for our SOL program, and that those scores and those reports could be incorporated into the Pearson system. So whether um, as a school leader or a teacher, you were looking for information on a student who took the SOL test, or you were looking for information on a student that took the VAP, that all of that information could be housed within one place within the Pearson system. So as uh, Sarah mentioned earlier, the new VAP is still and certainly a work in progress. So I wanna um, talk a little bit about the task that we have completed and what is yet to be done. Right now, in terms of completed tasks, we have developed the academic standards that are called the VSOLs that the new VAP is going to be based on. So we have VSOLs for reading, we have VSOLs for math, and VSOLs for science. Now, those VSOLs were developed initially by um, Department of Education staff, but they were validated by a team of, of Vir Virginia teachers. That was a very important step. So we've completed the uh, initial development and also the validation of those standards. We also recently completed a teacher, a teacher item alignment study. And what that study, the focus of that study was to have teachers look at the VSOLs and then to look at test items to make sure that the test item reflected the content 
of the standard or the content of the of the um, uh, VSALs. And then uh, an important piece of our work uh, has been the final bullet <clears throat> that you see on the left. We establish a stakeholder group. Our stakeholder group uh, is composed of um, um, directors of special education, um, directors of testing, teachers, parents, um, building, um, building, building level leaders. And that stakeholder group really is designed to give us input and to give us feed, um, feedback from um, um, diverse lenses as we go forward. So where we are at this point, um, we are in the process now of developing test forms. Now that we know that the individual items reflect the content that it's supposed to reflect, we're now in the process of starting to develop test forms for reading, math, and science. Um, an important piece of that is to have another level of, re of review of those test items um, from the um, standpoint of students who may have um, visual needs, students who uh, may be blind. So we are um, convening a team of uh, specialists in the field to take a look at the items from the perspective of the visually impaired student who might be taking the, um, the uh, new VAP. And you all here are here today uh, as a part of um, our effort to um, um, introduce the new VAP to the field. Um, as of this, at this point, we've had introductory presentations that we've given to um, directors of special education. Uh, we've done an introductory presentation for division directors of testing. Um, one for TTAC directors and staff. And of course, as you saw on an earlier slide, uh, five presentations, this being the second of five that are for teachers and other school staff who work with, um, work with these students. And the final um, item that, um, that's in progress, realizing that because we have a new test, <clears throat> we're gonna have a new test, we're gonna have uh, new standards that that test is based on. We know, we realize that teachers needed um, um, guidance in terms of uh, um, resources to help teach the new standards. So our um, um, TTACs across the state are in the process now of helping us develop those types of um, 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 resources. And you'll hear a little bit more about them a little bit later. And I think I have um, maybe one more slide. Okay, so here's, um, here's what's going to be um, happening um, as we move through the fall and then uh, the summer and fall and then into the 21-22 school, um, school year. Um, for the summer and fall, um, we are going to be focusing not only on uh, finishing our work on the test, but providing training to school division administrators and teachers who possibly are going to serve as examiners. Um, we realize that this is going to be a very uh, new and different process from uh, as compared to a portfolio-based test. And that training is definitely going to be needed. So that's one of the things that we um, are, are planning to have in place the, by the beginning of the coming school year. And as I mentioned earlier, we wanna have those instructional resources also available to teachers at the beginning of the 21-22 school year. Um, school year. So then as we are into the second semester, 
of uh, the 21-22 school year, winter and spring. Uh, preparations are gonna be made at the Department of Ed and as your part uh, for school staff for the first administration of the new VAP. So the test is going to be um, administered um, in the spring. Right now we don't have uh, specific dates as to when that window will open, uh, but we do know that it will occur uh, in the spring of 2022 and then followed by um, test scores, the um, availability of test scores in the summer of 2022. I think that's, that may be it for me, Sarah. Um, and so I'm gonna pass, um, pass it now to my colleague, Lisa DePaul. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Lisa DePold, and I work as a special education assessment specialist within the Virginia Department of Education. I'm sorry that you can't see me, um, but my camera has been acting up lately, so I only have audio this evening. Um, I will be presenting information to you again about those uh, Virginia Centralized Standards of Learning, the VSOL, uh, which Sharon has mentioned. Um, if you go on to the next slide, Sarah. Um, so in these next few slides, um, I'll be especially focusing on the essentialization process that was utilized to create those VSOL. Um, you will also have the opportunity to see some examples of different grade level and different content area VSOL. One of the first steps we took in working with our Oregon partners this last year was to create those new academic standards for students with significant cognitive disabilities who will be assessed by the new VAP. Um, these new academic standards or VSOL were created through the essentialization of the Virginia Standards of Learning. Essentialization is a specific multi-step process that was developed by the folks at BRT and that has been shared with us here in Virginia over this last year. Um, BRT staff, employees from the Special Education Student Assessment and other Virginia Department of Education offices, um, as well as special education teachers from divisions across Virginia, collaborated to essentialize the crucial content from the SOL to create reading, math, and science VSOL for the new VAP. Um, as you know, those standards of learning can be very thorough, dense, and lengthy as they summarize all the academic content that is presented to Virginia's general education students. Um, thankfully, the U.S. Department of Education allowed us to use this essentialization process to focus on reducing the depth, breadth, and complexity, also called RDBC, of the wide-ranging content that's contained within our standards of learning. Our focus was to look at those standards of learning and to distill the most important, pertinent, and useful academic content um, most valuable for students with significant cognitive disabilities. Throughout this essentialization process, we searched the SOL for the academic concepts that would be accessible to these students, relevant to their daily lives, and appropriate for their future. So us to keep in mind the wide variety of students who are eligible for assessment using the VAP. As part of that essentialization process, we leaned heavily on Webb's depth of knowledge hierarchy um, to assess the cognitive demands that was represented in the language that was used in those newly created VSOL. On a general assessment like the SOL assessment, we see performance demands across all four levels of the depth of knowledge wheel, including many at levels three and four, strategic thinking and extended thinking. For VAP students, instruction and assessment for students with significant cognitive disabilities should primarily reside in depth of knowledge levels one and two. Levels one and two cognitive processes represent different types of recall and application tasks. An alternative assessment, alternative assessment, I'm sorry, excuse me, an alternate assessment system like the VAP based on alternate content standards like the VSOL should have performance demands involving level one and two cognitive processes. One thing to note is that not all process verbs that are assessed or that are taught in classrooms are going to be included in Webb's depth of knowledge wheel. So if a verb that um, is used in a VSOL is not present on the wheel, then we looked at other verbs um, in the different categories on the wheel to examine their corresponding coherence to that particular verb. Um, and that, that way the depth of knowledge level can be inferred. 
Um, for example, the verb determine is not seen on the wheel, but it correlates to level two as an example of application of academic content. Um, now we're gonna move to looking at some examples um, where we compare the original SOL and the corresponding VSOL that was derived from it. On these slides, you'll see some of the verbs used in the SOL or in the VSOL identified with their level of depth of knowledge. And in general, you'll see that the cognitive demand as represented by the level of depth of knowledge has been decreased in the VSOL as compared to the SOL. Um, in this case, the third grade mathematics SOL on the left encompassed estimating and determining the sum or difference of two whole numbers. In creating the VSOL on the right, our focus was confined to the basic skills of adding and subtracting with a limited range up to 20. And moving on to our grade five reading example, um, you'll see here that the SOL on the left includes four bullets asking the student to summarize plot events, discuss the impact of setting, describe character development, and explain the resolution of conflicts. Although the SOL covers a great deal of material at higher levels of cognitive demand, the reduced VSOL is more tightly focused on identifying a character, setting, or an event in a story which is read to the student. For these final um, examples, I wanted to explain that in most cases, a single VSOL was distilled from the broad academic content of a single SOL. However, for some of the SOL, there were multiple areas of concepts that did not seem to fit within one VSOL, but which seemed valuable for our VAP students. Um, so as in this example, um, we have two grade 11 science VSOL, which are linked back to the same biology SOL. Um, the SOL covers a large amount of material pertaining to the chemical and biochemical processes essential for life, um, including water chemistry, macromolecules, protein synthesis, enzymes, um, photosynthesis, photosynthesis and respiration. Um, so because that is such a, a, a large chunk of academic material to cover, and we really wanted to distill down to those important concepts for our VAP students, we ended up creating two VSOLs out of this one SOL. Um, we focused on content pertinent, relevant, appropriate for those students with significant cognitive disabilities. So on your right, you'll see the VSOL that asks the student to recognize that plants need light, air, and water to grow and create energy through photosynthesis. And then on the next slide, you'll see the same SOL on the left, the same biology SOL, and it is again linked to a second VSOL, which has been reduced in depth, breadth, and complexity to focus on the concepts that living organisms have unique structures that help them to obtain what they need to grow and survive. Finally, in rounding out this section of the presentation, I just wanted to recognize the really important and crucial role that Virginia's special educators um, play in carrying out all aspects of the VAP. Um, these VSOL have been created to provide accessible academic content for your instruction of students with significant cognitive disabilities. The VAP test items are constructed with the VSOL as their basis in order to assess whether students have learned that academic content. As a result, the academic standards instruction and assessment are all intertwined and are not possible without the contributions and hard work of our Virginia teachers. So we do wanna thank you for that. Um, and now we'll look to Leah Mason to lead us forward in this presentation. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Leah Mason. I am the alternate assessment specialist in the Office of Student Assessment for the Virginia Department of Education. And I'm just going to spend a few minutes to talk with you about some of the basic design of the um, new tests that we are, new VAP tests. Um, as Sharon mentioned earlier before, we are in the process of um, developing test forms. So I know you all have burning questions regarding um, what this test is going to look like. So I'm just going to give you some, a basic snapshot of what you can expect. So as you already are aware, um, the new VAP test is going to be eligible for um, students with significant cognitive disabilities that are in grades three through eight in high school. And we are focusing on uh, reading mathematics and science with this new development. Um, the test items, we do not have a 
strong definitive answer in terms of how many or the number of items that will be on the test. What we can share is that the test items will include three answer options. Uh, the test will be presented online, but if students need to have a paper administration, they will have the flexibility to also have a paper administration of the test as well as um, test items can be read to the students and that the text to speech option can be used um, if needed for the students through this test. Um, you can go to the next slide, Sarah. Also with the new design of the test, um, students have a lot of flexibility in terms of how they can respond. Again, they have the option to choose their answer whether they are using um, the computer or whether or not they're using a paper administration. If they have assistive, assistive technology, they will have the um, opportunity to use their assistive technology to respond. Uh, teachers or an examiners will have the flexibility to um, respond for students by entering their um, answer options um, based on whatever their modality is. So if they have to respond verbally or if they're using eye gaze or pointing or any other type of head movement, they will be able to use that to respond. Um, a lot of other your questions in terms of the types of accommodations that will be needed for um, this test currently are under discussion. Again, this is a work in progress. So we don't have a lot of the answers that you will be looking for in terms of whether multiple test sessions and how long the test window would be. Um, we don't have those answers for you uh, just yet. They are coming, so fear not. Okay, next slide. So what I wanna do is as Lisa uh, walked you through the essentialization process of how we went from an SOL to a VSOL, I wanna give you a visual which is what we use with our kids a lot, visuals of what an item will look like as it has been essentialized from the SOL to a VSOL. So the first example we have will be a grade three mathematics example. Uh, can you go back one more slide, Sarah, for you? And so with this example where we went from 3.3a it went to the VSOL of add and subtract the whole numbers up to 20. And now this is what this item could potentially look like. Okay, Sarah, hit it. So now we have six plus eight as our STEM and then our answer options, three answer choices at the bottom, eight, 10, or 14. Okay, next slide. And so for for reading, here's a grade five reading example of our SOL. So the SOL has 5.5 and it has A, B, C, and E. And then that became essentialized into the VSOL of identify a character setting or an event in a story to read to a student. So this potentially could look like, there's my Vanna, to look like this item where we have pictorial support here uh, ben likes to bake bread, and we have three pictures for pictorial support, and then you have your answer options and word choices underneath, apple, oven, or bread. So this is a snapshot of what this would look like. Next item, I mean, next slide, sorry. And then science, grade 11 science. As we know, science is a real bear. Um, there's a lot there that we know that we possibly can't get all covered with our kids. And so this example of this SOL for Bio2, once gone through the essentialization process was narrowed down to recognizing that plants need light, air, and water to grow and create energy through photosynthesis. So what this would look like as an item would be, drum roll, here, again, pictorial support here, recognizing you have three pictures here. Your stem of your question will be which plant will likely grow better. And then you have your answer choices of A, B, or C. So those are just, that is just a snapshot of what items would potentially look like um, with the new test. And as we move forward now, I wanna uh, show you some videos. Now, before I show you these videos, I wanna preface this with that the video links that you are about to see are of students in the state of Oregon taking a paper administration of the test. 
And there's also an online administration. You won't see the students actually participating in the online administration, but you will see what it is, a snapshot of what an online item looks like. Now, the online items that you will see, the features there are not Virginia features. So the interface will not look, I don't want you to get caught up in that. That's the way it's gonna look. This is the way Oregon does it, but this is just gonna give you a really brief snapshot as to the potentiality of what a Virginia item could possibly look like. And then also with the paper pencil administration, um, be aware that their test security and their policies and rules are not the same for Virginia. So you may see some things that are happening that Virginia doesn't allow, and that's okay because we will at some point get our policies and procedures in place to pass along to you all. So again, I just want you to know that this is just a snapshot of what you can expect. The first example is gonna be a ELA paper pencil example. Okay. Here are three pictures with words. He reached for the pencil. Which word is reached? Uh, this one. This one. Reached. All right. Here are three pictures with words. I will read sentences to you. Follow along. Corn is one of the most important crops in Oregon. Since 2000, Oregon has doubled its corn farming. In 2011, Oregon farmers made more than $140 million from corn. It has become a bigger seller than Christmas trees. What is one of the most important crops in Oregon? Eggs, flowers, or corn? Corn. Corn. Excellent job. Okay, next we'll have an online ELA example. Here are three pictures with words. At a beach, you can play, walk, and relax. What is this sentence about? Cup, barn, or beach? Next, we'll have a math paper pencil example. Here is a number to the first power. A number to the first power equals itself. What is 15 to the first power? One, 15, or 20? 20. Here are three line graphs. Slope is how steep a line is. You find a positive slope by counting how many units you go up and then write from one point to find the next point. Which line has a slope of one up, one to the right? A, B, or C? Right. Here are three boats moving at different speeds. Boat A is going 20 miles per hour. Boat B is going 21 miles per hour. And boat C is going 39 miles per hour. Which boat is going the fastest? A, B, or C? Thank you. Our online example. Here is a feather on a hat. This hat has one feather. If you have one hat, how many feathers do you have? One, two, or three? And our last example, a science example.
Here are three objects. Which gives off light to make a shadow? Flashlight, calculator, or pen? F. L. A. S. Flashing. All right, so flashlight. Great, thank you. Here are three things. Which has the most water? Ocean, cloud, or lake? L. A. K. Lake. All right. Great. We got a last question here, Chloe. Here are three pictures. Which pollutes the earth? A. B or C? B. B. All right. Excellent job. Thank you, Chloe. Okay, so that was the end of our examples. And again, this was just to kind of give you a brief snapshot of what a test item or an administration could potentially look like. Again, we have not established those policies just yet. And so when we get to that point of um, getting all of that nailed down in terms of accommodations and in terms of testing windows and blueprints and all of that, that I know you're very eager to know, we will get that information out to you as soon as possible. This is the end of my section. Thank you all for uh, sharing with me. And I am turning this over now to my colleague in special education, uh, Ms. Deborah Johnson. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Deborah Johnson. I'm an educational specialist in the Office of Special Education and Instructional Services at DOE. And I am what they call the liaison between our Office of Special Education um, and the assessment office when it comes to the alternate assessment. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, go over with you a few uh, frequently asked questions. These are actually questions that um, uh, we've already covered, I, I think pretty well in the um, uh, webinar so far, but I'm just gonna go back over them and um, see if that helps a little bit. Uh, anyway, the first question is, what are the differences between the old VAP and the new VAP? You heard Sharon mention earlier uh, at the beginning of the presentation that the old VAP uh, was a portfolio style where students submitted collections of evidence consisting of work samples in the assessed content areas. The new VAP will be composed of test questions with three answer, answer choices, and the content areas are reading, math, and science. And the qu test questions will be based on the VSOLs, as you heard uh, Lisa mention, with varying levels of complexity. The old VAP was administered throughout the school year, whereas the new VAP will be administered in the spring and most likely will be administered individually to students. Uh, again, I think Leah or somebody talked about uh, that window. Uh, we're not quite sure uh, when it will open, but um, more to come on that. The old VAP was locally scored uh, by school teams. Uh, the new VAP now will be scored by the online delivery software. Okay, how will students with significant cognitive disabilities participate in the new VAP? Again, as you heard earlier, it's expected that most students will be tested individually using multiple and flexible ways to demonstrate their knowledge. Uh, the test items uh, are going to be presented online, but students may be provided with a paper copy of the items if needed. Uh, they will have the support of assistive technology and alternative communication modes, such as verbal responses, pointing of the head, uh, head movement or eye movement, uh, eye gaze um, are also allow allowable response options. Uh, the presentation accommodations such as magnification, read aloud, and text-to-speech are also allowable. Okay, who can participate in the new VAP? 
Uh, the Virginia Alternate Assessment Program, or the new VAP, is available to eligible students, as you heard Leo say before, with significant cognitive disabilities in grades three through eight in high school who are working on those academic standards that are reduced in, reduced in depth and complexity. The eligibility to participate in the VAP is determined by the student's IEP team using the VAP crit um, participation criteria. Folks, the participation criteria for the VAP has not changed and will not change for the new um, VAP. So I just want folks to remember that. Uh, they, these students must have a significant cognitive, cognitive disability in order to participate in the um, VAP and the, uh, let's see, yeah. Um, and it will be determined by the IEP teams. Uh, students with disabilities served by 504 plans folks are not eligible for the VAP and that is, uh, that's not a change. Will the VSOL replace the aligned standards of learning? Yes, the VSOLs will replace the ASOLs uh, in reading, mathematics, and science starting in the 2021-22 school year. Uh, and I know that there are, I've seen questions come in the, the, uh, the Q&A uh, tonight about uh, social, history, social sciences, and writing, and I think uh, that will be addressed here in a few minutes. <clears throat> Will curricular resources be available for instruction of the VSOLs? Yes, um, I am happy to say that the curricular resources to support VSOL instruction in reading, math, and science are currently being developed by our uh, VDOE's Training and Technical Assistance Centers uh, at Virginia uh, Commonwealth University, James Madison University, George Mason University, Old Dominion University, and Virginia Tech. Uh, these resources will be available on TTAC online uh, in the summer of 2021. Um, and I will say, folks, I've been meeting with them uh, fairly regularly here, and TTACs are on a roll right now, and I think you're going to be pleased with what you see. And that ends my portion. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, everybody, for for those presentations. Um, you should have a, a Q and A uh, button or area to be able to enter, to be able to enter your questions. So feel free to uh, enter those and we're going to address some of them here. Um, and I know that we've got folks monitoring the questions as well, but I think one of the, one of the questions that comes up is um, we've been mentioning math, reading and science. And so what about history? And what about writing? Those are assessments that are administered in Virginia. Well, and one of the things that I want to just remind you of is that um, we were required to make some changes to our VAP um, as a result of the federal requirements from the US Department of Education. Federal requirements include assessments in math, reading, and science. So we have focused our initial efforts on, on meeting those requirements and assessing those content areas. Uh, we are still doing some work on the writing and the history options uh, that will be available. Uh, it may involve some performance assessments or collections of evidence similar to what you're doing with the VAP currently. So stay tuned for that one. We'll, we'll have more information for, for you related to writing and history this spring. And of course, um, realize that that means middle school writing and high school writing and then an elementary, middle, and high school history. So a little bit, um, a little bit further down the road, we'll have some details on those. But this new um, assessment that we're administering online and with a paper version will certainly focus on the federally required assessments of reading, math, and science. I know an, another question that um, has been very popular this evening is when, when will you get those VSOLs? Uh, when will we be posting those and have those available to you? And Deb mentioned that the TTACs are working on curricular resources. Um, we will certainly have those and the VSOLs available to you this summer. Um, I'd like to think that the VSOLs will be available, will be posted sooner than that. Um, I would anticipate that that would be something that would come out as a superintendent's memo, uh, but we will certainly share it with your special education directors and the division directors of testing as soon as we have those available to post uh, a little bit later this spring. 
Uh, we know that we're hearing from folks that you want to get those as soon as possible so you can start some planning for next year. So that's certainly high on our priority list to make those available to you. Uh, yeah, and I see more questions coming in about can we get them now? And uh, we're we're getting closer to that day when we have them posted for you. So we will certainly certainly um, look forward to being able to share those with you and and sharing um, with your special education directors so that they can get that information to you. Okay, I see um, another question here about will teachers be provided with sample tests? Um, if you're familiar with the uh, standards of learning program at all in that online environment, we have what we refer to as practice items that are available both for teachers to see those types of items and also students and families to interact with those items. And we are working now to have some practice items available in a format for this population of students as well. So there will be um, a handful of items for each content area at each grade level um, put into the online platform and then also made available in a paper platform, paper test so that uh, teachers can get used to what, what types of questions are being asked. Um, parents and students can experience those, those questions as well. Uh, so that is something that will be coming. We hope to have those available sometime in the fall uh, to be able to prepare students for this assessment environment in spring of 22. Keeping in mind that this assessment will be administered for the first time in spring of 22. I know there was a, a question earlier when we were talking about um, the particular content areas and schedules. Uh, there was a question about what about a school division that has a middle school or a high school that's on a four by four semester block, for example, will we have a fall test administration? And the answer to that is no, we will not have a fall test administration for VAP. Uh, there will be just the, what we're referring to as a spring administration uh, or near the end of the school year. And uh, as a few of us have talked about, um, the actual date of that spring window is still being developed, but we anticipate that it will be early in the spring, that, it will be, that the test administration will be open. Um, we know that uh, from, the, from what you have seen in the videos, uh, I think you're starting to get the idea that this is very much a one-to-one -one administration in many cases. So we know that you're going to need the time to be able to administer these assessments to students. Uh, it may not be a case where a student finishes an assessment in a day. They may have multiple sessions that they need in order to be able to complete, complete one of these tests. So uh, we know that it, it, it will take some time to um, administer these tests to students. So we anticipate having a long test window and, and making that time available to you. Again, as we, as we have that information um, finalized, we'll certainly share it with you um, and through your division director of testing and your director of special education. Um, let's see, how are we doing here? Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions about the VSOLs. Yes, there will certainly be a copy of those posted and they will be just like the, the ASOLs are posted, uh, those will be available to you. Um, the VSOLs will be. There we um, have. And then the, yeah, go ahead, Leah. No, I was going to say we have um, quite a few questions about whether or not teachers will be able to select the VSOLs um, for this test. Do you want to, or you want? Okay. Sure, I can, I can address that one. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, this is quite a change from what you're used to as a teacher uh, currently with the VAP, where you could select the aligned standard of learning that is being assessed. Um, this is more so that we will give you what we reference as a test blueprint or the uh, VSO that are eligible to be on the assessment um, that will be covered in the, the questions that are administered to the student. And then you will focus you can focus um, your preparation on those particular standards uh, for testing. So it is not a situation where you select the aligned standard of learning or you select a VSOL that will be assessed. Um, that was actually one of the things that the 
U.S. Department of Education um, did not like about our current VAP. They felt that it was not a standardized assessment uh, because not all students were being assessed on the same content. So one of the requirements is that we must provide a standardized assessment instrument and be able to uh, assess the same standards for all students. And Sarah, I'm seeing a, yeah, go ahead, help me out here. What you got? Yeah, I was saying that I, I'm, I'm seeing several questions about um, 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 visually uh, impaired students and uh, what might be um, available to that uh, population of students. Um, I will say that in terms of that group of students, uh, we do have a team of um, vision specialists who are going to be reviewing the items. Um, as a matter of fact, they're gonna be doing that uh, really soon in a study that, um, that um, BRT is uh, conducting for us. Um, we do know that the items have been based on principles of uh, universal, universal um, um, design, but we're also hoping to get additional feed, um, feedback from our, um, from our vision specialist. So although we don't have specific information about what accommodations might be there, please know that we are taking that into uh, consideration that there are students who are gonna need some uh, support in that particular area. All right, thank you, Sharon. Um, Sarah, um, there, there are a number of questions that are broadly about accommodations, you know, so um, I know that's kind of a broad topic. Do you want to tap that or you want me to stay? Sure. The I know that um, some of the some of the accommodations are evident in that um, you saw the text to speech option or the read aloud option, and that will be available to all students that are taking that assessment or taking the VAP. So um, a text to speech option will exist, uh, or the examiner can read the test aloud. So that's available again to all students. You know, we have a lot of questions about um, assistive technology. Um, will assistive technology be able to be used. You saw um, communication devices being able so to be used as part of um, the student response system as how, how are they responding to the test items. All of those pieces are available. I know we've had questions about will a, a student be able to have uh, manipulatives and um, would a student be able to use a calculator, for example? And these are pieces that we are finalizing as part of the policy related to this assessment. So we'll certainly have additional details for you related to this. Um, if there are specific accommodations that you're uh, looking for, you certainly can um, you know, include that in the question and answer for us. This is a good opportunity for us to collect information. Um, so, um, if there's something specific you're asking about, let us know. Um, I, I know there's a, a question here about, is it really an online test or a paper test? And it's really neither uh, because the student can be assessed in either or both formats. Um, we're not looking at a paper test in the way that you may be familiar with a paper standards of learning test, for example. So there would not be an answer document. You may have noticed in that video that the, um, the examiner was marking the answer on her copy of the test when the student uh, indicated what the answer was. And that would be something that the examiner would be doing during this assessment. Uh, and they would eventually enter the student's answers into the online platform. So again, it's kind of a, a hybrid model of paper and online. Um, and it's, so that's very different than the SOL assessment system where you have to, you're either taking an online test or you have an accommodation for paper. Uh, this one is, is available in, in both formats to the student and uh, in different uh, modes of responding. Okay, let's see. Um, 
Deb mentioned about the participation criteria remaining the same. So there really are not any changes in that. We're, we're still looking at the same population of students participating in this assessment as those that are participating in the, in the current VAP, the VAP that's being done this year. Nothing has changed there. And, and Sarah, there are also a couple of questions about the uh, testing blueprint for the new VAP. And um, okay. we are currently um, uh, kind of in the final, final pieces of uh, developing the test, um, test um, blueprint. So as soon as those have been, have, have gone through their final, their final um, re review for approval, those will be posted on our, um, posted on our website. So I think you can look for, um, uh, sooner rather than later, the testing blueprints as well as the um, as the um, VSOLs, which are going to be used for the test. Okay. Sarah, there's there a lot a of questions about uh, private day, um, whether they're going to have to do pencil paper online. I don't know if you want to address that. Okay. Yeah, keep in mind again, this is this is a bit different than the standards of learning tests and how we're determining paper, pencil, or online. So this particular assessment really is administered um, in a in a hybrid model. So um, we're anticipating that there will be some students that take it online and some students that participate in paper. Um, how that's handled with the private day schools, um, we'll be getting some additional information um, available to school divisions and to those locations as we as we uh, determine how that's going to roll out. Uh, but we are anticipating that um, that these students will certainly need have have to have available a paper test. Um, this is a little bit different um, in what we're anticipating and that we're for division directors of testing, um, when I say the terms packaging and distribution, uh, they know that I'm talking about shipping copies of SOL tests. And this will be a, a little bit different in that um, this test will be available to the division director of testing or the school test coordinator to be able to share that assessment uh, within the building. So again, a little bit different in that it's not a, a printed test booklet, um, you may have seen in the, or you probably saw in the video where um, the examiner was putting a printed copy of the item in front of the student uh, for those students that were participating in paper. So it is, a, it is a little bit different scenario. Again, a number of these things, um, you know, Sharon talked about and I talked about this is a work in progress. It is very much that. Uh, we wanted to get you some introductory information this evening. Um, some of that to give you a glimpse into what's coming, but also some of that to help um, collect questions from you related to what it is, what other types of information you're looking for. So please enter your questions. Um, we do have an evaluation that we'll have you complete at the end of this so that you have an opportunity to give us some additional feedback, but we appreciate these questions. These are very helpful for us to know uh, what you're thinking. I see a question about when are parents going to be told that this process is changing. Um, we are working with our stakeholder committee currently. Um, there are some parents included in that process in that stakeholder committee, and we'll be um, we are developing a communication plan related to this. So uh, additional information will be forthcoming on that one. And there's, there's also a question, Sarah, as to whether the students will take the assessment at certain, at certain grade levels, like the current VAP. And uh, yes, um, this, this test, just like the current VAP, will be for students in grades three through eight and, um, and, um, and a high school. And a kind of, kind of a, a, a related question, um, and I don't know if I can find it again, but um, it, it asks, would um, the students be taking the test based on their, um, the student's um, functional reading level? I believe that's the way it was fra phrased, but keep in mind that we have to base the VAP 
on um, the SOLs for that particular grade level. So um, what that means is that we went through the process of reducing that content as you shared with early, as was shared in an earlier presentation. Um, but we do have to have our standards and hence the test um, based on the same content that the student would have uh, if the student were um, instructed in SOL content and taking the SOL test. We're just able to reduce it in depth, breadth, and uh, complexity. Uh Sarah, there was a question on here. If somebody uh, is getting ready to hold some IEP meetings later this month, can they share this information with the parent at that meeting? And my answer would be yes, please do. Yes, I, I think that's a that's a terrific answer, Deb. Thank you very much. I think the the fact that um, teachers are at this meeting, uh, excuse me, at this webinar, um, you're certainly welcome to share this information. Um, there will there will be communication uh, forthcoming that is geared towards parents. Um, but yes, please do share the information. I know we've got a question about will all of the questions be multiple choice? Um, and you may be thinking about the SOL test that has technology enhanced items where student drags and drops an answer or fills in a blank. Um, all of these questions will be multiple choice. Okay, so that is, they will all be multiple choice and they will all include uh, three answer options. And uh, Deborah, I, th I think there's a, a question that you might be able to address from the standpoint of special education, but the question is, how, how does this work with the, with the applied studies diploma for students who have already completed certain VAPs? And there was a similar question about the um, applied studies uh, uh, curriculum. This should not interfere with that at all that I'm aware of. Um, you know, with the students, students, there are many students that are that are uh, receiving the applied studies diploma do take the alternate assessment. There are also some students that receive the applied studies that diploma that do not take the uh, alternate assessment. Okay, so um, no, this should uh, it, it should not impact them at all. <clears throat> okay, and I know that um, we've got a couple of questions related to um, how this this assessment will be used in accountability. Um, for both federal accountability and state accreditation. And uh, just as the current VAP is used, uh, there's a pass rate that's calculated. So there will be a pass rate that is calculated on this assessment. Um, the score reports will be uh, familiar in the sense that a student will earn um, one of uh, a few different performance levels, uh, pass advanced, pass proficient, uh, fail does not meet expectations. So there will be a performance level assigned to the student as well as an, an overall score. And then um, in terms of accountability, um, the, the information about whether the student passed the test or failed the test is what will be used in determining the pass rate. Um, there's a question about will there be expedited retakes? And the answer to that is no, uh, we are not anticipating um, anything like an expedited retake in this scenario. We know that um, the amount of effort that's going to be required in administering each of these assessments to this population is going to be extensive. And um, the students will have an opportunity to complete each of the assessments one time. Um, another question was related to the growth assessments. Some of you may be familiar um, and hearing different information about um, some activity that happened in the General Assembly this year, uh, introducing growth assessments for students in grades three through eight. And that's for uh, what we're calling through course assessments or basically tests that are, are constructed out of SOL type items, SOL test items. And so the question is, will there be 
an assessment administered in VAP for growth? And the answer is we will not be administering a fall assessment for VAP. Uh, so we are working through what we're going to do as far as um, measuring growth in this uh, initial year. So more details to follow there, but that, that growth assessment legislation is only referencing the standards of learning assessments. It does not require a separate administration of the VAP assessments. And, and Sarah, there's a, a, a question as to whether or not there's going to be a pilot testing period uh, like um, was in place when the um, SOL test first came on, um, came on board. And the answer to that is no, that we really are not able to have a pilot testing period. And it goes back to the, re, um, the requirements that I mentioned earlier that uh, USDOE was requiring of our state. And one of those requirements was that we implement it, that we would implement the new VAP by the spring of um, the 21-22 uh, school year. So there's really not an opportunity um, coming out of the heels of the old VAP and the new VAP to, um, to put within that um, short time frame a uh, pilot, a pilot test opportunity. That's exactly right. Um, Sharon, we've got a question here about asking, will there be, are there VSOLs at each grade level and are there tests at each grade level? And um, we talked about grades three through eight and high school. So reading and math would be, there would be a reading test and a math test at each grade level in three through eight and one set high school. And then in addition, remember that science is administered once in the elementary, once in the middle, and what's in the high school. So um, science would be added in at three different points uh, along the way. So you're looking at a reading and math assessment. Um, and then in addition at fifth grade, eighth grade and high school, you would have a science assessment added in. Um, we've got a, a number of questions about um, how, will the, how will the test be administered or who will be administering the assessment. Um, those are some pieces that we are still formulating the policies on. Um, we do anticipate it's going to be an examiner and a teacher in the school. Um, we know that it's going to be, uh, there will be situations that are very much like what you saw in the video and that it's a um, one teacher, one to one student. So we are not expecting a, a group of students to be taking an assessment online like you would have with the standards of learning assessment. So that's why we've talked about needing an extended test window. Also, we know that it will, it will take some time to administer these assessments. Let's um, see, there's a, yeah, go ahead, Sharon. It's Deborah. Uh, th this is Deb. Deborah. Um, there have been quite a few questions about what happens if a student um, doesn't pass the VAP, will they uh, still be able to get an applied studies diploma? Um, I guess I just want to remind folks that currently right now with the Applied Studies Diploma, the only requirement uh, for the Applied Studies Diploma is that you meet the requirements that are set forth or that you meet the requirements that are set forth in your IEP. Um, and and um, in other words, passing or passing or failing the VAP doesn't have any um, uh, any effect on whether or not they get an applied studies diploma. And, and there's also a question, Sarah, that you may want to take about whether this is going to be a CAT test or the same or the same items presented to all to all students. Sure, this this is not a computer adaptive test like the uh, three through eight standards of learning tests in reading and mathematics. This is what we call a traditional test form or a fixed or linear test form so that the grade three math test, for example, all students will receive the, the same items. Um, we anticipate that as you go through the test, the test will gradually become more difficult. The items will get a little bit more difficult. Um, 
but there will certainly be additional uh, information coming forth about what standards, what are, which of the VSOs are in that test blueprint. We know you're going to want to have access to that test blueprint as soon as possible, so that will be forthcoming along with the actual standards themselves, the VSOs themselves. Um, but it is, it is not a computer adaptive test, um, but we'll be constructing it, um, the test in a way that as you go forward in the test, it does, does get a little bit more difficult. Um, there was a, a question about, is there still the, I'll call it an opportunity for parents to refuse participation in this assessment? And just like the, the current VAP, um, there may be parents that make the decision for their student that they don't want them to be assessed by this required assessment. Uh, that is certainly a parent's choice to make that decision. So um, just, as, just as we handle it currently in, the, in our existing VAP, it would be handled in a similar fashion uh, for this new VAP. And there's also a question about uh, will there be a flat cutoff level for, um, for passing? And uh, Sarah, if you could respond to that. Sure. Um, you may have heard the term standard setting uh, previously. And if you haven't, I'll give you a quick overview. It's where we have uh, committees of teachers, or at least that's how we do it in Virginia. Um, we bring committees of teachers together. So this will be something that we'll be looking for teachers uh, special ed teachers that work with this population. Uh, we bring them together and have them review the test items and the test form and make some determination about um, what, what number of items a, test, uh, a student would have to score correctly on the test to be proficient or what number of items a student would have to answer correctly to be passed advanced uh, or what constitutes a, a failing score on the test. So that standard setting process is something that will be occurring um, prior to the spring 22 test administration. Um, we will be recruiting teachers for that process. So that will be something that we'll be getting details out to the special education directors and the division directors of testing. Um, but essentially we have committees of educators that convene to look at the different items, engage the difficulty of those and uh, help us determine what what a student would have to um, answer correctly in order to achieve a, a proficient score. And we do that separately for a reading test and then separately for a math test and a science test at each grade level. So uh, that is a, a process that we go through um, as far as the determining what, it, what is required to pass a test in the, with the new VAP. And there's uh, questions uh, too that I see about whether we're going to provide a link to the presentation and or and also whether the presentation is going to be rec um, recorded. And uh, the answer um, to both of those questions is uh, once all of the presentations are completed. And the last one I believe is scheduled for May 26th. So sometime after that. Uh, a recording uh, of one of the five presentations will be um, available on the VDOE website. And we, we've got a, a couple questions from, the, uh, from high school folks, I believe, or folks that um, interact with um, teachers in the high school related to, will there be some flexibility um, regarding when math is administered, for example, when the reading test is administered, when the science test is administered. Uh, that's something that we know that you have currently in the existing VAP assessment at the high school. Um, it's something that is being discussed as far as how will, how will that be managed under the current VAP. So uh, we're certainly open to feedback on that. Um, feel free to enter that in the evaluation. Um, I did put a message in the chat to everyone that has a, a link to the evaluation. So uh, we are reading those, so we appreciate hearing from you uh, with any um, positive feedback, any constructive feedback. We certainly are open to this. Um, I know that there have been a couple questions about how can I get involved in this process. Um, and I would say that um, connect with your 
uh, directors of special education, um, your DDOT, those are the folks that we will work with in recruiting assistance. Um, the standard setting committees that I mentioned uh, would be something that is usually advertised by a superintendent's memo, uh, would be shared with the special education directors uh, to filter down to the, the teachers in the buildings. Um, so we certainly wanna keep you in, in, in touch with this process. Um, and we anticipate additional information other than just this introductory webinar too. So um, certainly a lot of information will be forthcoming as we continue to um, prepare this assessment for administration in spring of 22. And Sarah, I know we only have about five, about five minutes left, but I did see a question um, up near the, near the top of the list uh, asking what are the federal peer, re, um, peer review requirements? And uh, to be honest, I don't think there's enough time <clears throat> that we would have to <laughs> answer that. I will say that the requirements themselves are a 77 page document that covers all kinds of technical adequacy and technical quality ranging from universal design uh, inclusion of, of students, accommodations for students, the processes that we use to make all of those uh, decisions. But it, but it is a very involved process that has very specific um, and stringent requirements for states. And one more You're question. You're exactly right. One more question. Yeah, um, there's a question about whether or not this new assessment is still a part of the 2%, the cap. Um, the, and I'm thinking we're, when we're talking about this population, we're talking about a 1% 1 population. Cap. Yes. Right. 1% yeah. cap. Yeah, the 1% cap. And that is part of uh, federal accountability and federal requirements. So there will be, um, this, this is a federally required assessment. So um, I'm sure we will be monitoring the participation levels um, yes, in will. this assessment, just as, just, <laughs> thank you, Deb. Yes, we will. Just as we have in the other VAP assessments, we're kind of required to do that by federal law. So uh, there will be a, a cap on, on how many can participate in your division, just as there is currently. And, and Sarah, there's a question that a lot of people may want the answer to as to whether or not um, um, uh, participants tonight are going to be um, uh, uh, eligible to get some sort of um, um, attendance certificate for um, attendance. So if you could address that. Sure. Uh, we have over, I know there was over 300, there were 500 people registered. So, um, and we've got uh, a bunch of these a bunch of these sessions. So we're not making individual certificates. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is um, use your registration information, that email that you got um, and the memo about the webinar and perhaps um, work with your uh, certification coordinator in your, the licensure coordinator in your building and uh, see if they would be willing to work with you for the point for the session this evening. Uh, that would be a local decision on that. but. No, we, we won't be sending individualized certificates tonight. I apologize for that, but we're just not able to do that with the resources that we have. And there um, um, also, what, oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. No, I was just gonna say there was an, another question that came in about um, that all of this testing will occur in the spring. Is that correct? And that, that answer is correct. And spring is a relative term. Um, depending on when this administration starts, whether it starts in, you know, if we open this administration in the March timeframe um, and it runs through June, um, we, we're not sure exactly what timeframe we're looking at, but uh, when we say it happens in the spring, it means we won't be doing anything with this in terms of a separate administration in the fall. Uh, it will be more so an end of year type assessment. I guess we have uh, opportunity maybe for one for one more question, but I believe I saw it a couple of times as to whether um, the test could be changed by the teacher to have um, two answer options as opposed to three. Um, 
a change like that is actually a, a modification of the test rather than an rather than an accommodation. And so even though we have uh, very, and suspect that we'll have very broad and flexible accommodations um, so that students can, can show their knowledge, modifications of the test in terms of uh, reducing the answer options from three to two uh, is not something that is um, allowed on standardized tests. Okay, and I think Leah, um, Leah, it looks like, thank you, you sent out the, the link for the evaluation. Uh, so please um, take a moment and complete that for us. We really appreciate that. We, we are interested in your, your feedback. So um, we do read the information. Uh, so thank you very much. And again, thank you for using some of your time this evening to spend with us, we appreciate it. Uh, the questions have been helpful for us to understand what types of things you're looking for um, and it will certainly help guide us with providing additional information going forward. So thank you. We're going to wrap this up. Um, we hope that you have a terrific evening and a great rest of your week and uh, keep your ear to the ground. There will certainly be more information coming about the new VAP. So thanks everybody for attending tonight. Take care. Thanks everybody.